Well, welcome back, folks, viewers from around the world. Again, this is Lolo at Kitchen Table Talk at Lolo's, and we have our first repeat guest, none other than Sensei Prime, a.k.a. Coach Prime, all the way from Nassau, Bahamas. And we're going to talk a little bit about self-defense, since uh, we both love self-defense and the self-defense. And uh, we just want to encourage you guys uh, about the spiritual journey, about how it helps you, about the discipline it gives you, when it helps you to shift your mind, shift your awareness, be alert about danger, not just the danger that can harm you, but the danger of you harming somebody else and having the control, not just doing it from the inside, but showing it from the outside. Let's again welcome back Sensei Prime. Hey, how's it going? How's it going, uh, everyone? Thank you very much again, uh, Lolo, for having me here again. It's been an honor. Like I say, uh, I am super excited, always, always excited once I get an invitation to the kitchen, uh, kitchen, table, kitchen top. table top at the table, brother. at Lolo's. Yes, bring it out on the table. And um you know, is is it's just amazing. I, I wanna I wanna I wanna say that I feel like you are doing something very, very beautiful here. Something that is unique because you are giving individuals a voice. Again, you know, you're always gonna say that you're giving individuals a voice. And nowadays it's 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 so much easier to to get information out there mm -hmm. via internet. You know, back yep. in the days, it was so hard. Before this internet thing came on board, it was very difficult to get messages from A to B. Uh, so right now, I'm happy that we're taking advantage of this opportunity. And I encourage everybody out there that's watching, if you have something to say, if you want your voice to be heard, by all means, you reach out to Lolo and 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 get this opportunity. Uh, it, it's it's awesome. So thanks again, and I'm 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 super excited for us to to have this call. Awesome, you're welcome. Okay, listen, guys, I know you all may see me in my gear and all that good stuff, but I want you all guys to understand. I'm at age sixty five. I learned to take care of myself. When I was a young kid. In primary school, I was bullied. I was bullied. I was bullied at school. I was picked up by two guys and turned upside down, and my money was shook out of my pocket. My mother worked nights. She didn't have time to fix lunch and all this bunch of stuff, and she traveled a lot. And so periodically, my brother and I would live home with her. Well, at one point in time, uh, we were living, we were staying in the Grove. This is on, on the island of New Providence. And I had money. I always had money to buy lunch because there were little petty store. We call them petty store. Today here, we call them bodegas. Yeah. We're going to buy five cents salty sausage. You get five, six slices of salty sausage. You get hot sauce on it. And you get crackers, biscuit with that. You can get cup. You can get little sandwiches, so you can always buy lunch. You know, you can buy hard cheese. When you need a biscuit, you need a cracker biscuit. That was lunch with strawberry soda. That was lunch. Sometimes you're able to carry salam bomb in bed. But my lunch would get taken away from me. Well, wow. I started hanging out around the karate schools. And... um in my situation, I would prefer to not mention any of my senseis, which are three of them. But I will tell you that I began learning karate right around age nine. I had the opportunity to use it once or twice in school. Well, once in school and then once outside of school, catching one of the guys who bullied, kind of got me even. <laughs> <laughs> but in those days, I learned self-defense to take care of myself. And after I got a little grown and still, I became a little more adult. 
um, I moved to Freeport, Grand Bahama, which is the second city in the Bahamas. And uh, I began to expand my self-defense with Kung Fu. And moving to the United States, I continue in Taekwondo. Well, today I work out, I keep myself fit. I take care of myself, as you can see. I look fit, I am fit. Trust me, don't test me. Just trust me, please. Do not test me, just trust me. <laughs> um, so coming in this evening, uh, I said, I know we had an appointment to go ahead and, and uh, do the show because I would like for Sensei Prime, second degree black belt, uh, who is also an instructor, um, to run down the steps, the nine steps it takes to get the black belt. I'm not talking about first, the first down, second down, third down, masters, just, just those, the nine steps to get to black belt, um, the time involved and the money it involved. If you're not cleaning the school and and you're not sensei's son or family member, and sometimes family members gotta pay sensei too, because the rent gotta get paid. Um, so with that being said, uh, first, uh, I would like for you, uh, Sensei Prime, to run down the nine steps it takes um, to get to Black. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> I come from Smokey's Karate School. We call it SKS. Proud member of SKS, always will be. SKS family forever. I have a tattoo on my chest. <laughs> says SKS. Uh, my instructor, I, I mean, I mean no type of disrespect to any other instructor out there. In my opinion, my instructor is the greatest in the universe. Straight up. Straight up. Not, not just because of his supreme fighting skills or his his uh, top-notch martial arts techniques, but because of who he is as a being, the things he did as a being and is still doing to this day, God is, is, is truly going to bless him forever. I, I send my blessings to him in every single way. His name is Ronald Smokey Martin. Ronald Smokey Martin is a fifth degree. He's a master. And um, he does it for love. You know, he have a passion for it. And I, honest to God, you know, I had to, it took me years to, it took me years to, to get to the place where I released feeling like I owed him my entire life because, because he did something for me that no one, else did for me he gave me an opportunity to live my childhood dreams uh, and just a quick little story before I get into the different levels of it in our school I was always a Bruce Lee fan but it not just but not just a fan like I was Bruce Lee like yo I was Bruce like <laughs> listen I was Bruce <laughs> You have to understand, I was Bruce. Oh. I was Bruce. <laughs> so, <laughs> and so, and so, uh, you know, growing up as a kid, you know, not having access to certain things, because this was a long time ago. This was literally in the 80s. So I didn't have access to certain things. Uh, I was, I, I taught myself, my, my friend, his name is Adrian. Okay. He's he's a brother of mine, pretty much neighbor. We grew up. We would watch Bruce Lee movies, and we would practice, and we would train. And so I I pretty much learned martial arts. We were self taught. We learned martial arts together, him and another another brethren of mine, and we we kind of like self taught for a while, and then and then I just it just was it came natural for me. I never went to a school, and I actually when I started martial arts like officially with master smoky i was 32 years old okay 32 years of age and it happened because of a good 
a fraternity brother of mine, his son was in his school and he he said, hey man, you know, this guy, his name is Smokey and he's doing this with these kids and he's doing this with these kids and they're, he's awesome, he's awesome and he's this and he's that. I had a, I had a, my son was four, four, five years old at the time, four years old, I think. And he would take them at five. Okay. I went and I sought him out and I, and I found him. And one morning he was uh, walking in to his class and I just met him at the bottom of the stairs and I said, good morning. So how are you? And he said, I'm, I'm doing great. How are you? I said, I'm awesome. I said, a friend of mine, I'm not sure if you know him. And I called his name. He said, oh yes, I'm familiar with the name. I said, yes, he told me about you. And I had to come and find you. And, and I told him that I, I wanted him to be my instructor. Okay. But not only, not only my, be my instructor, but I wanted him to teach my son how to uh, become, how to study and learn martial arts. And similar to you, I wasn't bullied in school. But I got into, I got into altercations with the bullies in the school. Mm. For some reason, my my friends would they would get bullied, and and I would always find myself there with them, helping them out of each situation. And so that caused me got, I did got beat up a lot of times because sometimes these guys were like higher grades, way higher grades. Mm. But to me, it wasn't about a win or a lose or a draw. It was a, I'm still no matter what gonna let you take advantage of me or my friend. Right. And so that was why I wanted, I always wanted to study it. And that's why I wanted my son to study it. And so he asked me, he said, why do you want to study martial arts? And I said, honestly, I want to study martial arts because of the spiritual aspect. I want to be mm. able to meditate. I want to be able to, you know, be in a space where my mind can, can leave this planet and and bring peace and harmony to my inner being, my inner self. Uh, and this actually, to be honest with you, took place after the fact of me uh, being in that relationship, the abusive relationship and all of that. So it kind of all ties in from the last um, show and everything. Uh, and so he was like, wow. You're the first student or the first person that ever came to me and wanted to, to to wanted to learn martial arts for that reason. He said, you know, I've been teaching for well over 13 plus years uh, on my, you know, with my instructor and then on my own for many years. And you're the first person that come to me, say people want to learn how to fight. People want to learn how to defend themselves. People want to learn how to beat up someone or whatever, like crazy reasons. But you're the first person to come with that reason. And so I said, OK, cool. And I was like, so are you going to take me in? And he said, yes. I'm a firm believer. And I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't remember where it came from, but I'm a firm believer of this saying because I heard it many times. When the student is ready, the teacher will show up. Mm, yes. And that <laughs> happened for me. That happened for me. So when I went in, I asked him how much it, it cost. And he was like, uh, I think at the time it was like $100 a month or $60 a month or $50, but it ended up 100 because I wanted me and my son. Okay. So I think it was $100 a month for both he and I to start. And, and then I was living on the island of Exuma. So I was back and forth between Exuma and Nassau. He is permanently located in Nassau. And so was my son. And so... Because I was traveling, I was like, I have to travel. And so I won't be able to make the classes as I want to and whatever else. He said, no problem. He said, just make sure uh, your son is here. And I, I said, no problem. Spoke to his mom. And we always made sure that my son was present for classes. And so he would be in class full time. And I would come to him once I got on the island of, of Nassau. Uh, but I was still practice on my own when I was in Exuma. And I ran into some financial difficulties and and something amazing happened, man. Something amazing happened. I went to him and I said, you know, uh, in the upcoming months, I don't know how long it's going to be, but in the upcoming months, I'm not going to be able to attend classes. And neither will my son be able to attend classes. 
because you know I, I'm I'm financially challenged and I'm not able to meet that obligation that that I have with you. And so for that reason, I you know I you know I'm sorry, but I'm not gonna be able to to come to classes. And so he said, classes are Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. It's it's four o'clock till I think six o'clock. Um, bring your son to classes on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and the rest of the classes, don't worry about it. You don't have to pay for it. So I'm saying to myself, well, there's only classes on Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. <laughs> So the only classes on Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, but the rest of the class don't worry about paying. So that means on Tuesdays and Thursday, I'm like, I don't understand. He said, just bring him here, make sure he's the class. Don't worry about the money. You said, get okay, it. cool. Yeah. I was like, okay. I said, okay, cool. So I told his mom, that no matter what you do, make sure he's in class, please, because we we have the opportunity of a lifetime. That started with him. Now, with me traveling back and forth, I, I wasn't coming because I couldn't pay for him nor myself. So if he's giving me this opportunity for my son, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to be there for support. So every class I was, once I was in town, I was to every class my son had supporting him. And he asked me after one of the classes, he said, he said, uh, Prime, tell me something. I said, I said, uh, Oh, master. He said, how come you don't come to class when you're in town? And I said, B -b -b because I, I was telling you with the money. And he said, no, man, no, man. When you're in town, come to class. Don't worry about the money. And so I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I owe this man my life now. And so... <laughs> I'm there every class, every class I'm there. I was the classes I wasn't even supposed to be to. I was showing up to. He's like, no, 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 this is the black belt class. You're not supposed to be here. I was like, okay, I just was showing up to see if you wanted me to be here. He said, bye. He said, bye. Like I would pull up by his house. If I was driving past his house, I would just stop by and I would, you know, he had a gate and I would just be at the gate and I would just, good morning. Hey, good morning, master. How are you? Good morning. And he'd come to the door and he'd say, hey, Prime, how you doing? I said, good morning, Master, how you doing? And uh, I was like, you having any class today? He's like, no. Go, 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 go. Class tomorrow, go, go. I'll see you to class tomorrow. I said, host Master, and I'll go. And this went on for years. And this, and this, he saw something in me mm -hmm. that I couldn't see in myself. And so he poured himself into me. So my process went extremely quickly because I I I I 10xed it like Grand Cardone would say I 10xed it. I met I went to morning classes, I went to the afternoon kids classes, and I went to the adult evening classes. I went to my Saturday classes when he had it. I would show up when he was working out personally and he would send me back home. And then I would just wait downstairs when he's finished working out. And when he comes downstairs, he's like, I thought I sent you home. I said, yeah, I just came back to see if you needed anything. And so he's like, this guy is crazy. So, <laughs> so, so eventually he started to let me work out with him mm. in his personal workout sessions. So that helped me to become that much better a whole lot quicker. My process, if I can remember, took me anywhere between three to four or five years to get from white to black. Mm. And that is almost unheard of in our school. So I, I was like, I was, I was on it. I was mm. to everything, to every event. I was, I was asking him if I could practice with the kids, like the adults, like the parents used to be like, who's this grown man? Like, and they, who's he? I would, you know, and he would tell me no. And I would say, okay. And then the next class I would ask. So what I used to do was come to the kids class early and the kids that come like the, 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 the older kids, I would practice with them and I would have them teach me all of the katas and all of the forms and all of the different techniques and all these things. 
And when it was time for their class to start, I would have to step off the mat and sit on the side. So I was just double down, 10X and 10X and 10X and 10X and getting this in there. And so you would have to start, you would go from white to yellow belt, to green belt, to first degree purple belt, second degree purple belt, first degree brown belt, second degree brown belt, third degree brown belt, and then you would go into your first level black belt. And so I went through all nine steps in like about four or five years. Mm. Um, wow. and, and it was crazy. The type of money I had, I would have had to pay is, is, is just it, you know, picture it being a hundred dollars a class, hundred dollars a month, my a hundred dollars a month from anywhere, anywhere from six to 10 years, it would take you to kind of get to where I got. Mm. Uh, second degree was another few years. I had to wait just to go from first degree to second degree, like some two to three years. Uh, so all in all, it took me anywhere from four to about seven years to get to second degree. And um, many people that's in the school, they still, they, they still, they're still not there yet. Wow. Uh, I was his first adult instructor that he created. Yeah. And, and my son got as high as, I think, second, first degree brown belt. And then he decided that he, you know, wanted to take a break and, you know, that's another story, but, but it would take years to get there and a whole lot of work, a whole lot of discipline, a whole lot of humility, a whole lot of, of self-searching and so much more, a whole lot of money. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes it's right around $8,400 um, over a seven year period. If you, if you were calculating a hundred dollars a month. Right. Right. And that's not promotions because when it was time to go from one belt to the next belt, each promotion was like a hundred dollars per per promotion class. And then when you got to the black belt, the first degree black belt I think was around a thousand to fifteen hundred, and then the second degree was I think from fifteen anywhere from fifteen hundred to like two thousand dollars. Mm. Yeah. Because you had to pay for these things. You, you pay for your belt, you pay for your gi, you pay for the classes, you pay for everything. Like, like when it comes to that, because it's an examination that you got to go through to get to the next level. Uh, so it's, you know, if you start talking numbers, I'm talking a lot of money and, and my instructor, anywhere from ten to $12,000. And if you look at it, and my instructor, he really saved me a lot on money. He saved my life. Uh, he kept me off the streets. He gave me a reason to respect myself on many levels. Uh, he gave me some thing to, to put before me that would that would govern me. He was like a governor for me. Mm. Because a lot of times when I wanted to act out and catch some of those guys that I felt deserved my wrath. <laughs> I knew that no matter what I did, I no matter what I did, if it wasn't done with justifiable reasons, I had to see him. Mm. And if I in in anybody, <laughs> anybody know that you do not want to see Master Smokey if he's upset or if he has to reprimand you, because the, the gentleman is a very sensible guy. <laughs> So it, it it kept me in it kept me in line. Wow. Well, I'm yeah. I'm 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 glad you shared this, and uh, I know children with anger anger issues. Yeah. I've seen quite a few young men and girls, young men and girls come in class. Um, disrespecting their moms, disrespecting their dads, and their mom and dad does not, they, they never wanted to get in a confrontation. They never want to put their hands on them because, you know, especially here in the United States, you can't put your hand on your children just like that. Mm -hmm. And I've seen children conform to angels, angels mm -hmm. and, and, and gentlemen, mm -hmm. ladies and boys. 
And so I would recommend, I would recommend um, parents start taking their children to self-defense classes. Mm -hmm. Find one in your area, take them to these classes, make a sacrifice. Instead mm -hmm. of spending that, I'm not saying do not buy Reeboks. I'm not saying do not buy Michael Jordan sneakers. I'm not saying do not buy any sneakers that don't buy memorabilia. I'm not saying do not do that. I'm saying cut back a little. Take them to karate classes. Take them to line kung fu. Take them to line taekwondo, to jitsu. Let them learn these things. Take them to school because it, it's, it's good for their mind. It helps them with their mind. It calms them down. It helps them with respect in the home. They they learn to respect their brothers and sisters. They learn to respect their moms and dads. Mm -hmm. They learn to respect themselves. And like mama say, prodigy begins at home and spreads abroad. When they go to school, they learn to respect the teachers. Mm -hmm. Hard work the teachers put in to teach them so they can have a great education. But when they become adults, they can take it to home properly, correctly. Even if they come from a, from, from a broken home, from a single mom home, a single dad home, or mom and dad who's always away, away working. They learn to respect their brothers and sisters. They learn to respect the kids in school. They won't fight. I think the school would be a whole lot more common. You know? And you don't come up inside no, 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 not even primary school, but you've got a bunch of kids who know karate. Tell them you, 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 can, you can have a shooting spree. Again, that's your mm -hmm. grade. They, mm -hmm. they know what to do. They can hide, they can do this, they can do that, they can do the next. It'll be like, a, a, like you say, 10X, home alone. Yes, you yes. Will get, they will get destroyed. Don't come into school. Yes. Around. The children, no. they are soft. Yeah. They need to get back in, in self-defense class. Since I prime, do you have any last words? Uh, you want to take a minute to um, any last words for the for the parents who have children who act out, who um, you know, I, I know some 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 kids miss their dad. Um, the dad's not home because of whatever mom did. They, you know, they need to learn to walk away, like you said in in in, in a previous uh, interview. You said you saw. Alpha, Omega, beginning and end. Literally, you became God in the situation and you judge. You was powerful, be merciful. And you saw your stuff on the yard. You could have done differently or gone away. Even your friend, your roommate at the time, who was living with you, thought that you were going to lose it. Your mother asked you if you're okay. Didn't understood you. Said to you, Please do not do anything without knowing the discipline you had already learned from self-defense. What would you say to parents and even some young kids who are listening to this? I would say to, to not just view martial arts or the art of self-defense as just a physical thing. And when I say that, not just a physical defense, not just someone come to you and you can defend yourself physically, but as something that helps you to rewire your mind and the way you think mm -hmm. so that you can defend yourself from a spiritual aspect. Mm -hmm which controls the physical body, develop that mind, that self-defense mind, so that you can defuse something before it even takes place. You know? Look at self-defense as more than just that physical thing because it is way bigger than just people screaming, yeah, and and blocks and punches and cutters and all these things. It is, it truly reconditions the mind. It truly recreates the God in us. Yes. And, and it helps us to, it helps us to, to, to form the world. Right. On a, on a spiritual 
level. Right. Uh, and, and I would encourage and challenge, uh, you know, parents to, 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 to look into things like that. Find a very good school. Find an art that may be fun to the kids, something that would get their attention. Like Kung Fu is very it's beautiful art. It's beautiful. What I did and what I study is extreme martial arts. And so we have a little bit of Kung Fu, a little bit of Taekwondo, a little bit of Karate, a little bit of Jiu Jitsu. We have a little bit of everything. So it was so fun for me. I never, ever, I still don't know every single thing of every single art yet. So it's it's so unique. It keeps you going forever. If that's the case and, and your kid is like me and always needs something to kind of keep the mind going, mm -hmm. find an art that does it for them and enroll them in it because it will definitely be the best investment you ever make in your life. <laughs> And that's that's I, I that's that's what I gotta say about that. Well, folks, you heard it here on Kitchen Table Talk at Lolo's. And uh uh I hope that this um this 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 production of the show um helps you to look at self-defense in a different light. And uh I hope you tune in. To our next episode um, of Kitchen Table Talk at Lotos. Again, Sensei Prime, aka Coach Prime, thank you very much for joining us again. Uh, we look forward to having you back. Yes. <laughs>